Hey everybody, Donna Schwartz here from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site for practical tips and solutions to improve your musical performance. If I look bleary-eyed or tired, I am. <laughs> I literally just walked in the door about like five minutes ago. Um, I just played the Viva Las Vegas Festival. It's a rockabilly festival in Las Vegas. And our show last night was at 12.30. We played till about almost 1.30. Good crowd. People were still awake and alive at that time. I guess everybody is on the strip, right, so to speak. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Just walked in from uh, driving back and uh, wanted to do this Facebook Live. So thanks for joining me today. I wanted to talk about one topic in particular and possibly two if there's time. Uh, the one topic I was thinking about was mindset when you're playing. In other words, as David R. asked this question, how do you get out of your head when you're playing? I thought that was really, really um, a terrific question and so appropriate for actually what I went through this weekend and actually the past three weeks because I've been on the road in um, three different states, <laughs> three different weeks, so I'm a little crazy right now. But uh, actually a little bit of a plug. The band that I played with last night were called SGS. This is our new CD, okay, new cover over there. And here's the back, I'm on there. The funny thing with this, I gotta say something about this picture. The funny thing with this, we took this months ago, sitting in the stairwell of the recording studio. And uh, I didn't know we were gonna take a, you know, a picture or whatever. So Brad, as the band leader, the bass player, phenomenal bass player from Australia, He's got that accent. I don't have that accent, as you can see. So anyway, he decides to take a picture. So he says, you know, let's just get on the stairwell and take a picture. I'm like, all right. So he says, all right, just look cool. So I didn't know how to look cool, because <laughs> I'm not. And so I just made some kind of facial expression or whatever pose. And so that's me over here. And after they took the picture, everybody that I've showed this picture to says, I look like scarier than all the guys in the group. And I'm the shortest one. I think that's hysterical. <laughs> Every time I look at this picture, I, I laugh my ass off because it's just too funny. But anyway, our new CD is out. It's actually, we do a take on rockabilly songs and rock and roll songs and we twist things. So if it's a rock song, we'll make it into ska. If it's rockabilly, we'll make it into like a punk type of thing. Um, it's really cool. A lot of good stuff on here. Um, so if you want a copy, hey, just let me know. You know, write it in the comments below or message me, um, you know, or even send an email to me at DonnaSchwartzMusic at gmail.com. Okay, so just to let you know about that, new CD out. Okay, I always like to start off with a quote. The quote, well, it's Jazz Appreciation Month, so I took this quote. This is a Gershwin quote. Life is a lot like jazz. It's best when you improvise. Now, you can interpret that two different ways. Life's a lot like jazz. It's best when you improvise. Sometimes, you know what? You can't plan every single little thing out. And for people like me that are anal retentive um, and a little OCD, that can be kind of hard. Okay, It can be kind of hard to just improvise and adapt on the fly. But you know what? When you're improvising jazz or you know playing or whatever, you do have to adapt on the fly. Not everything's so controlled. Okay, you can't control everything. So, in life, we have to do the same thing. Things don't always work out the way we envision them in our heads. Okay, so for example, uh, today I wanted to get back here uh, before 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time so I could do this Facebook Live, and I barely just made it. Um, I accounted for traffic, but apparently there was more traffic than I thought, some strange stops along the way. So, I had to adapt. So I had to think to myself, okay, um, you know, what could I do if I was late? You know, all those types of things. But in terms of performing, you know, sometimes you're at maybe at a jam session and you have a couple of tunes in mind that you want to call out, uh, but maybe the band doesn't know it or maybe someone else just did it before. Well, then you kind of have to adapt and maybe call out another tune that you feel somewhat confident with and go with the changes, you know, go with the uh, go with the flow, so to speak. So life is a lot like jazz. It's best when you improvise. Now the other interpretation is this, and this is going to kind of start to go into um, into David's question. Jazz is a conversation, 
okay? If, we, if you're good at having a conversation with your friends, then you have to kind of approach jazz that way. Yes, you need to learn vocabulary. We've well, got to learn vocabulary when you have a conversation with your friends, right? Um, you have to use the appropriate vocabulary. Well, if you're talking with your friends, you're probably not going to talk proper. You're going to talk the way you talk, some slang, you know, some expressions, all that kind of thing. Well, with jazz, you know, you have to see what the environment calls for, okay? Certain styles of music. Dixieland calls for certain vocabulary. Blues calls for certain vocabulary. I tend to play a lot of rockabilly. That calls for certain vocabulary. I can't be, um, I can't be putting all these tritone substitutions in. I try, but no, I shouldn't. <laughs> it's not appropriate. It's not the right vocabulary. If you're doing jazz standards, there's a vocabulary that goes with that. Um, but you also have to adapt, too, because like the band, one of the bands that I'm in, the SGS band, we take a standard tune, not a jazz tune, just a standard rock tune or whatever, and we adapt it. So I have to adapt my thinking and my thoughts on soloing for that particular tune. So in order for me to have a decent conversation, I have to have some kind of skill set, some understanding to in order to have a decent conversation. So that's my other interpretation for that George, George, Gershwin, George Gershwin quote. You see, I'm tired already. Life is a lot like jazz. It's best when you improvise. So it's all about adapting. Okay, so David's question, how do you get out of your head how do you get out of your head when you're playing? That could be practicing. That could be performing at a show. It could be performing just in front of your friends or family. It could be performing at a jam session. You know, on the way back home from Vegas, I was binge listening to a really great podcast. It's the Learn, uh, Learn Jazz Standards, LJS. Look it up. It's very good. Learn, LearnJazzStandards.com. And I was binge listening. And one of the episodes was about, um, all about jam sessions and such. And, you know, knowing, like, what questions to ask and, and just how to approach it and that kind of thing. Um, and one of the comments that uh, Brent, who does this podcast, was saying was that when people go to a jam session, just pay attention to the energy in the room. A lot of times it's filled with a lot of nervous energy. Okay, people are concerned. Well, what are they concerned about? Hey, hi, Mark. What are they concerned about? They're concerned about their ego. Their ego playing in front of other people. Will I be judged? Will I be harshly criticized? Um, what will people think of me? Okay. They also think about, well, I'm learning some really great vocabulary, very great licks. Can I, you know, throw them out? Can I pull them off, you know, during this jam session? It's all self-centered. And I'm not meaning that in a harsh way. I'm meaning it in, I'm just saying it for what it is. You know, especially when you go to a jam session, you you usually go to a jam session uh, with a couple of thoughts in mind. Oh, you know, I want to work on these tunes. Or I want to see, you know, if I'm, I'm working on this vocabulary, if I'm able to incorporate it into my solos. But the, the thing that's missing with that kind of thinking is this. And this was said on that podcast too. Jazz is a social kind of music. All right, it's conversations, think about it. So if your conversation's like this, it's all about me, it's all about me, listen to me, listen to me, all about me, all about me, buy my CDs, buy my CDs, it's all about me. No one's gonna listen to you, no one's gonna buy your CDs, all right? It has to be, it has to be equal parts listening and equal parts contributing, contributing, but also listening to the vocabulary and uh, the language that's going on. So. One of the answers to your question, David, in terms of how to get out of your head when you're playing, literally, really, get out of your head, your head, and think about what's going on around you. Why do you play music? Do you play music for fame? Do you play it for getting the applause of the audience? If that's your purpose, um, you should kind of rethink that in a way, because the more that you think in that outside kind of level, uh, it's really hard to get any kind of internal satisfaction and um, it doesn't help your playing. But if you approach music, music is fun, you enjoy it, it gives you a rush, it helps you to express yourself. A lot of people tend to um, 
They're not good with like regular conversation, but they're so much better when they're behind a horn. <laughs> Anybody relate to that? Um, you know, then they enjoy that. Then that's what they take music up for, for the fun, for the enjoyment, for the social aspect. So, you know, and, um, and adapting to the social <clears throat> conversations and all that kind of stuff. So that's one thing to think about, getting out of your head when you're performing. I like to think of it this way, and a very wise person told this to me, and I, I always say this. When I'm performing, even last night at 12.30, and I have to admit I was really tired. I was having a really off day. Um, you ever have one of those days where, you know, it's like you, you think you're all clear and there's clarity and all this kind of stuff and, you know, all that kind of thing, but all of a sudden everything starts to go wrong and you're not sure why? <laughs> that was yesterday. Um, and it happened like midway on my trip up. I had a great trip up, but for some reason, things were just going wonky. And, and to the point where even when I got there, I felt like I was disoriented for whatever reason, which is weird because I've taken so many long drives over the past three weekends, and this was the shortest of the long drives. Um, and and to go, going to my point too, I'm a little bit disoriented right now, and I just forgot what I, what I was gonna say. But um, point being, when you're, when you're performing, this wise person told me this, you got to get out of your head, and the way to do it is to focus on the audience. Now, people may argue and say, well, jazz, you know, it's all about the music, and, you know, just get involved in the music, you know, forget about the audience. No, you don't forget about the audience. Be grateful you have an audience to listen to, especially nowadays where jazz is not getting um, enough recognition. We think it's getting enough. It's not. It really isn't. When I moved to New York, when I moved from New York to California, I can't believe how much less jazz is taught in the public schools. I mean, it was, to me, it was a big deal on Long Island. I had a jazz band in my fourth and fifth grade. It was the pride of the school. I know that, the kids knew that. I come out here and, and I barely see anything. Um, so when you're playing, don't be so self-focused. Think about your audience. And this wise person said to me, think about one person in that audience. One person who's having a crappy day, just the worst day, and your message, your expression, the whole group's expression is going to flip the switch and make that person go from being in a bad mood or depressed to feeling so much better. Isn't that the point? Isn't that the point? Doesn't that make you not only feel good knowing that you help somebody else? I mean, isn't that our purpose also, to help everybody instead of just being focused on ourselves? So my answer to your question is, you know, when you feel like you're in your head, focus outward. Um, last night, like I said, I was having a crazy day, disoriented, all this kind of stuff. And my first couple of solos, I was in my head. And I'm thinking to myself, what, the, what am I doing? You know, it happens to everybody, you know, and, and I'm sure, you know, these great Professionals will say the same thing. Sometimes, you know, shit happens and you're in your head. You've got to get past that. Um, so the way to do that, focus on the audience. If, if you have performance anxiety, and I get that because I did suffer from that for quite a while, then focus on your bandmates. If you're in a community band situation, really focus on not just, you know, exactly what you're playing. I mean, you want to definitely, you know, be playing the right stuff but listen to the interchange between the sections I played trumpet in a lot of um, bands and, and orchestras and stuff like that and I wouldn't just pay attention to my part I'd always be listening to what the woodwinds are doing how the message was passed between the strings woodwinds brass percussion and how the dynamic levels changed and how the flow was going so get really super involved in the music then if you have performance anxiety and you know, are, are a little bit scared of playing in front, of an, in front of an audience, get into the music. But more importantly, have fun, okay? As Mark puts down, play for fun, the word play to me implies that it's supposed to be fun or enjoyable, right on. <laughs> I can give you a thumbs up, but I can't seem to do that on this thing over here, Mark. Yeah, it's gotta be fun. If it's not fun, if music is getting to be tedious, a job, a burden, Take a break from it for a little bit. Take a break and evaluate how you approach music. Because it very well could be that 
um, you need to change your focus. And one of the things that you can do also to get out of your head when you're playing, play different styles of music. Okay, that was also one of the uh, podcasts I listened to on learned jazz standards. But I also do this with my own students. You know, um, if they want to learn jazz, awesome. We'll get focused on that. We're also going to learn some of those classical etudes too. Because not only is it good for your for developing your technique, but there's chord progressions in there too, folks. Okay, a lot of the jazz chord progressions, they're in the classical music. They were there first, right? So. And what jazz brings to that is like a lot of those reharmonizations and all that kind of stuff. But I think we all know those those famous stories where Charlie Parker, you know, was, has, was playing stuff from the Rite of Spring. And uh, he was playing a gig and Stravinsky was in the audience. And he noted that and he started playing stuff from the Rite of Spring. How freaking cool is that? How cool is the Rite of Spring? If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out Stravinsky's The Rite of Spring. And then you're, you're going to be like amazed, okay? So play different genres to keep the interest going, okay? And to keep, when you keep your interest going, the audience knows it. If I did these weekly podcasts and, and weekly lives just like this, with no emotion on my face just talking like this, well, I'd have no viewers. I'd have no replays, okay? I wouldn't have any likes. But I care about what I'm doing. I care about music education for me. It's so important that everybody gets a good music education because not everybody's going to be or wants to even be a music performer. But we do want people in the audience that love music, that enjoy it, that the music transforms their day, makes them happier, makes them feel something. Okay, because when we get to a society where we don't have audiences, that's not good for our society. Okay, it's not good, you know, on an emotional level. It's not good on a societal level as well. Okay, so hopefully, uh, David, I answered your question um, in terms of mindset. Now, as a performer, again, just I try to focus on uh, the audience. I try to really get involved in the music. You do want to do that work beforehand. You do want to, whatever tunes you're playing or especially pieces that you're playing, you don't just want to sit there and read a chart on the music on the uh, on the bandstand. You want to get involved with it. You want to hear different recordings of it. If it's an original piece of music, try to get the um, you know the piano chords or something and work out the chords. Hear the harmonies. If you can't get access to that, let's say you're in a co community band, concert band, or an orchestra. Every time you go to rehearsal, listen for something else, not necessarily from your section, but you know from other sections as well. That's going to make that piece of music come alive for you. It's going to give it more meaning for you. And it's going to also help you play that piece of music much better because you're going to, you're going to own it more. You're going to understand it more and own it more. So that's another way to also get out of your head. A lot of times we get into our heads when we're playing because we're not so confident in what we're expressing. And it could be that, you know, we just haven't taken the time to really, really dissect that piece of music. Um, or it could be just a little bit above our level at that point. That's, that's fine. But just recognize the fact that the more that you study that piece of music, the more you get into it, you dive into it, the more you're going to own it. And when you own it, you're going to feel better about it. The audience knows. The audience knows when you're having fun. They know when you're not having fun. You could feel the energy in the room, all right? And that's another way to also help you get out of your head when you're playing, okay? Now, sometimes we get wrapped up. It's not just the technique that we also uh, get wrapped up in our head. It's also our tone. Um, I know in the past there's been times when I'm playing, I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? I'm not, this is not the way I really want to sound. That can really mess your head up too. You know, um, so you've got to make sure that your embouchure setting is good. You're breathing well, right? You really want to focus on taking taking a um, taking a nice deep breath, filling up, right? You need the fuel, right, to be able to play. So, you know, what I'll say to you also to get out of your head, make sure that you work on your tone every single day. Super duper duper important because the first thing that people listen to isn't the 5,000 and a half notes that you play in a solo, they're going to get lost. 
What they're listening is your tone. They're listening to your tone. If you don't have a good tone, it turns people off. And just to let you know, I have a course, Get a Killer Saxophone Tone. It will be opening up in about a month or two, so check out my website. If you haven't signed up for my free weekly newsletters that give you practical tips and solutions, do that at DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. And uh, if you want to get on the wait list for the Get a Killer Saxophone Tone course, I'll put the link in the show notes. So thanks to everybody for uh, showing up. Please share this replay, all right? Share this with other musicians, not just saxophone players, because these... These issues, playing, get, trying to get out of your head, affects everybody. It affects speakers, too, if you think about it. Public speakers, right? Number one fear. <laughs> Not of dying, it's of public speaking. So share this with those folks as well, because maybe that'll help them, too. They have an important message also that they need to get out to the audience. All right, cool. So, guys, thanks for joining me. Um, I'll be probably at my normal time next week on Facebook Live um, on my page at facebook.com slash Donna Schwartz Music. Sign up for my newsletter. Get on the wait list for my course. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Have a great weekend.